tutorial, I'm going to talk about consumer surplus and producer surplus as it relates to price floors and price ceilings. As usual, I start out with price on the vertical axis and quantity per unit of time on the horizontal axis. I'll draw on the supply and demand curves. Right there, the gray dot is equilibrium, price equilibrium, and quantity equilibrium. That's also known as the market price, market quantity as well. There are consumers willing to pay a higher price than the equilibrium price, and some consumers are willing to pay a much higher price than the market price or the equilibrium price. They don't because they can pay the equilibrium price right there. These consumers benefit from a lower price, and the blue area is consumer surplus. The same is true with suppliers. Many suppliers are willing to take a lower price, but they don't have to because they can take the equilibrium price, which is higher. So they benefit. The area below the price and above the supply curve is known as the producer surplus. Let's imagine the government imposes a price ceiling right here. We'll label that price ceiling. Quantity demanded is there, and quantity supplied is here. A price ceiling is a price the government doesn't allow to rise above. It's a ceiling. Now I'm going to talk about what happens to consumer and producer surplus with a price ceiling. This area here, the yellow triangle, used to be the used to be consumer surplus before the price ceiling. But what has happened is the quantity supplied and demanded at equilibrium was there, and now quantity supplied is less. As a review, producer surplus used to be the red area, but it's shrunk now to the small triangle because less is being supplied at a lower price. Consumer surplus has changed as well, and the yellow outline, I guess that's a trapezoid, is there. And now consumer surplus is the blue area there. There's been a shift in producer surplus from producer to consumer, which is this purple square rectangle. And that's just a transfer from one to the other. Now this blue triangle I'm filling in now, I'll make it gray, used to be consumer surplus, now it's dead weight loss. It's loss to consumers. The red triangle, again I'll make that gray, is a dead weight loss to suppliers. It used to be a benefit suppliers had, now they don't have. And we call that a dead weight loss to society as well. So a price ceiling causes a dead weight loss to society. The society loses with a price ceiling. Now I'll draw in a price floor, and this is a price the government doesn't allow to drop below. With a price floor, the quantity supplied is there, and the quantity demand is here. So we see quantity supplied is greater than quantity demand. There's really two types of price floors. There's one where the government guarantees price supports and the government buys the surplus. Another type is where the government doesn't guarantee the price floor. It doesn't guarantee to buy the excess. There's no guarantee such as the minimum wage laws. So the government, there's no guarantee that the government will buy the surplus. And I'll talk about both these in a little bit of detail now. Since quantity supplied is greater than demand, there will be a surplus. And the question then becomes is, does the government buy the surplus or not? The blue triangle is the old consumer surplus, and at a higher price, consumers are worse off. They have to pay a higher price, and they also buy less. On the other hand, producer surplus used to be the red triangle. Now it's much larger because it's benefiting from a higher price, and it gets to sell everything even excess to the government. The most common price floor in this category are price supports for agricultural products. 
There's a transfer from consumers to producers, which is the purple area there. Keep thinking that purple area is called a trapezoid. So there's a net transfer. The yellow triangle is a surplus, which the government's bought and purchased. Generally speaking, taxpayers have paid for the surplus. What happens to the surplus? It depends. Another type of price floor is minimum wage. We have a supply of labor, which are workers. Think of it that way. We also have demand of labor, which are businesses or people demanding labor. Minimum wages are generally above a market wage. I'll put that there. Now at the higher wage, there's a surplus of workers. This is also known as unemployment. Quantity supplied of labor, which are workers, is greater than the quantity demanded of labor, which is how much businesses want to hire people. Quantity supplied of labor, which are workers, is here. Quantity demand is here, which is how many people businesses want to employ. And the difference between quantity supply and quantity demand is unemployment. The real loss, though, are the workers that used to have jobs and no longer have jobs. And that's the difference between the equilibrium quantity supplied and the new quantity demand. These people have lost their jobs. Consumer surplus used to be the blue triangle. Now keep in mind that's businesses because they consume labor. Wages, they're worse off, right? They have less surplus. But producer surplus, which are workers in this case, the workers who have jobs are better off. There's a transfer of benefit or surplus from consumers, which are businesses, to workers. And the size of the transfer is the blue square, or blue rectangle, I should say, outlined by the yellow. So workers who still have jobs are better off. Now you're wondering what happens to the workers that lost their jobs. Businesses used to have benefit. Now they don't because they don't employ those workers. And that's a dead weight loss to society measured by that first gray triangle. The red triangle, I'll make that gray as well. These are workers who had jobs and now lost jobs. That's also a dead weight loss to society. There's no benefit again. With price floors and minimum wage, society is worse off, but some workers are better off those that kept their jobs.